I'm Victor with ExpressGarageDoors.com. Replacing garage door springs can be dangerous. I would recommend if you are not handy, that you call someone to do it, a professional garage door company to come out and replace these springs. Ever wonder why your garage door might not go up? This may be one of the reasons for that. Look directly above your door. If you have a spring that has a gap in it, that's the reason your door isn't going up. You have a broken garage door torsion spring. Once one torsion spring breaks, you should go ahead and replace both. They're both rated the same life uh, cycle time, ups and downs of the door. So if you just replace this one before too long, you're gonna be replacing this one also. So just go ahead and do them both. Before you start the job, you want to go ahead and disconnect your garage door opener uh, arm just to get it out of the way, gives you more space and so forth. Pull the release and slide it out of the way. First step for replacing these springs is the spring that has not broken has to be unwound. First thing you're going to need a set of turning bars. This is how you wind and unwind these springs. Also you're going to need wrenches, 3 8 inch wrenches and 9 16 inch wrenches. This is a standard garage door with a set of torsion springs, drums, cables, torsion bar, and center wall bracket. The spring needs to be unwound and on a standard lift door you're going to put your the turning bar in the cone, it's called a cone, with set screws. You're going to take the tension off the spring, stick the other turning bar inside of it, and then let the pressure back onto this turning bar. That's taking the spring tension off of the tube and put it on this bar here. All the tension that's in these springs is on this bar resting against the door. You want to make sure your entire body is out of the path of this right here in case somehow you are able to let this go. Next step, most set screws are 3 8 inch. You want to loosen them. Turn them counterclockwise. You don't have to take them out. You just have to loosen them. Get them off of the bar. Now, all the force of the spring is centered right here. The way you unwind the spring on a standard lift door is to take the pressure off of this bar and put it on this one and let it unwind. One turn, a quarter turn every time. It's going to be on an eight foot door. Each rotation requires four turns of this cone. If it's a seven foot door, it would take 28 turns. An eight foot door requires 32 turns. Unwind this till there's no more tension on the spring. The spring is totally unwound now. Once you've unwound your springs, you need to separate these springs from each other and the center wall bracket. It's a bracket that bolts to the wall here. It takes two 9 16 wrenches and it's very simple. This bolt is jammed up against this spring wire. When this spring broke, it spun a little bit on this cone and it's jamming the bolt. You can still just by hand undo this bolt. Once these springs are loosened from the center wall bracket, there's going to be a bearing in here. Most doors have bearings, and this is the center wall bracket. Now the spring should slide across the torsion bar. I'm going to loosen the broken spring set bolt. Back them off quite a ways, but you don't have to take them out. Now the spring is loose from the torsion bar.
next step after the springs have been loosened from the torsion bar so we need to loosen the drums from the torsion bar they have the same kind of set bolts that the springs have so just turn them counterclockwise and loosen them from the torsion bar now they're loose the drum will slide back and forth good time to disconnect your cables and inspect your cables to see if any of them are frayed because now's the time to replace them you get the other side loosened and a cable off the drum you want to come to the, this side and loosen these bolts you don't want to do any of these things until those springs are disconnect unwound and disconnected do not touch these things until those things have been done disconnected and then disconnect it's hooked in Dis disconnect the cable now, torsion springs have been unwound disconnected from the center wall bracket the left drum and the right drum have been disconnected from the torsion tube and the cables have been released now all you got to do Spring over, slide the tube off the bearing on the end bearing plate, take the drum off, slide the spring off. Put the tube back in the bearing and slide it until that side comes out. Now that we've moved the tube from that side over, it's out of the bearing. Slide it over a little bit more. Reach over. Get the spring. There's things getting heavier on the end, so you want to support it a little bit. Take the drum off. And slide the spring off. Now it's time to put the new springs on. What we have here is an identical set, the 225 wire size, 28 inches. These are two inch internal diameter springs. They're virtually identical to what we just took off. Now on this one, you wanna make sure that the red cone or right hand spring, right hand wind spring goes on the left side of the door. Spring on, put the cup drum on, slide it back into the bearing, slide it till the other side comes out. Now we're ready to put on the right side spring. This will be a left hand wound and it'll have black paint on the cone. Slide the spring on, make sure your set bolts are out back far enough. Slide the drum back on with the set bolts. Put the inside of the door and get the bearing. The springs are back on the tube. Okay, we're going to reset the drums on the uh, tube. Put it back, the tube back to where it was before. The tube goes through the bearing. It should be oily and black. Put it right at that point. Then you want to look at the marks from the set bolts that they dug into the torsion tube, you want to put them right back into the same marks. Should be pretty easy to find. Once you do that, go ahead and tighten them up. You don't want to crush the bar, but you do want to dig into it. Then we're going to take the cable. Sometimes they have this extra piece here. Sometimes they don't. You want to, if it does have the extra piece, you want to put it up against the stop with the cable fully into the slot in the drum and into the guide, pull it out towards you and then begin to wind it into its groove onto the drum. And have this right looking just like this. Once you have the drum attached to the torsion tube, everything's back in place, including the cable. You want to lock it in place with a pair of vice grips. Torsion tube is set, and the cable and drum are set on the left side. Go ahead and put your cable stop in place. 
into the drum and then go ahead and wind it up. Make sure your cables are unencumbered and free from anything. It should be a straight line all the way down to the bottom bracket. Pull the cable tight. Go ahead and hand tighten these. They should go back into their original slots. Once you have your drums in place, set cables in, everything's taut, you want to just double check. Make sure this cable is approximately the same tightness as that cable on this side. Just give them a tug. Now we're ready to go ahead and reset the springs and mount them to the center wall bracket and bolt them in. We'll take the center wall bearer, make sure it at least is sitting inside the hole here. Put a spring on it. Put these next to each other. Have to line up everything on the bottom. And the bolts are in place. Sometimes set bolts have lock washers, some don't. If you have them, go ahead and put your lock washer on. Put your nut on, both top and bottom, and tighten the nuts and bolts. Okay. Everything's back in place. Cables are in the drums. Drums are reattached to the tube on both sides. Springs are bolted to the center wall bracket. Now it's time to wind them up. And being that this is an eight foot high door, it's gonna take 32 quarter turns to wind this spring up to match this door. Once we get that done on both of them, we may have to do some fine adjustments on the springs. But once we're done, this door should lift quite easily by hand. Put a little bit of tension on these springs. So let's just wind it up maybe half a turn. So we can get a torsion bar in, just like that. The tension of the spring will hold the torsion bar in place. Now start winding, pull the bar up, stick fully seat the next one, and let it rest on the bar. Now let's just start counting there. One. Two. 32. Now make sure these bars are fully seated in that cone. It's 32 winds. What you want to do, push it over a little bit, stretch it out just slightly. Now we're going to secure the spring to the torsion bar with the set screws. Get them good and seated. It'll take probably a full turn to seat them. They're set. Put your turning bar back in the spring. Push upwards a little bit. And let the tension slowly back on the door. If you feel that it slipped on the torsion bar, reset your Tor uh, turning bar, reset that one, and tighten these up a little bit more. Okay, as you notice, we wound that spring up. What happens with these springs, as you wind them up, they'll actually get longer. Don't worry about these old set screw holes. Okay, now you're finished here. You're getting ready to put lifting tension back on the door. You want to do this slowly. Okay, everything's done. Just need to pull the vice grip and check the door. by hand and when you're finished and you've got it fully open it should stay open. Now 
Now that we've finished with the job, you want to reattach your garage door opener and check everything there. Bring it forward. Line up the hole with the arm. Remember to put the cotter pin back in.